there we go, we're, we're recording. Hi everyone, it's the 19th of October and we are very lucky to, to have um, Cassie O'Connor with us tonight who is uh, the leader of the Greens in Tasmania. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got some Greens people from South Australia on the, line, on the call tonight, uh, which is great. So we're talking about getting a job guarantee on the parliamentary agenda which is um, a fantastic thing that's happened recently in Tasmania on the 23rd of September, I think it was, the motion was passed. And so we are getting together tonight to talk about how that came about and see if there are any um, uh, things that we can learn that, we could, that could help push the agenda forward in South Australia. Before we hand over to uh, to Cass, I'd like to just um, uh, acknowledge that we're meeting on Aboriginal land tonight and I'll read the acknowledgement um, that I've written just because I like to make it a little bit special. Um, so I want to acknowledge and pay my respects to the First Nations people on whose stolen land we all live and work. I acknowledge their wisdom in caring for the land and the grief that they feel as their country suffers the effects of climate change and global warming, which is a product of colonization. I acknowledge the important role that First Nations people play in the fight for climate justice. So tonight I'm joining from the land of the Ghana people, um, as are probably most people here. Um, but if you are on someone else's land and you know that land, if you'd like to put it in the chat as an acknowledgement, that'd be fabulous. And I will pass over to Cassie and Steve. Um, Steve, perhaps, do you want to get the PowerPoint up first and then um, we can take it away. Thank you. Do you want me to start now, Gabby? That would be fantastic, thank you. Great. Um, hello, um, everyone from the Sustainable Prosperity Action Group, and thanks so much for the invitation to have a chat with you tonight. Uh, my name is Cassie O'Connor. I'm the leader of the Tasmanian Greens. I was um, first elected 12 years ago. Um, I've been a minister in the Tasmanian government for um, numerous portfolios because our parliament is far too small. Um, the leader of the Tasmanian Greens for five years. And just by way of background, I grew up in a really diehard um, labour the family and my dad worked for Gough Whitlam and was mortified when I joined the Greens but when I moved to Tasmania I could do nothing but um, join the Greens. In a past life I was a journalist. So um, what's uh, happened here on our beautiful island Lutrawita, Tasmania is that we've made the first relatively tentative step but a significant one towards getting some action on a jobs guarantee. This gorgeous island, Lutrawita, Tasmania, um, has entrenched uh, intergenerational disadvantage uh, as an island community um, for the longest time since um, invasion. Uh, the economy is very heavily dependent on resource extraction and that means of course you get these boom bust cycles uh, in terms of jobs and we um, have industries here that are particularly divisive. One of them, of course, is the native forest logging industry. But what we've had to watch over many years now is our best and brightest leave for the mainland because um, there just simply hasn't been um, the opportunities or the diversity or career pathways of uh, jobs on this island. Um, we've also had um, many decades of underinvestment in public health and public education. We have a chronic housing shortage. We're also an island that um, has a quite high level of dependence in some way or another on Commonwealth support, about 34% of Tasmanians um, access some form of Commonwealth benefit. And just um, uh, in closing a little bit on Tasmania, one of the issues that we have here is a, um, a sort of a, a north, northwest, south divide, and um, far too much of the prosperity is concentrated in the south. And we have um, deep disadvantage in pockets all over Tasmania, but particularly in rural and regional Tasmania. So, um, as a result of COVID, it was actually um, no surprise, but um, young people and women were the hardest 
hit by the pandemic and um, we're an island that's been very heavily for the last 15 or 20 years dependent on um, the visitor economy and tourists and suddenly everyone they just it just disappeared the change in the fabric of this island was so profound and it happened overnight um, we've now got um, out of a population of about half a million, 38,000 on job seeker, and um, the economic thinkers are concerned that youth unemployment will hit about 25% by the end of this year. So we have um, a huge job ahead of us um, to provide that kind of um, hope for the future that um, young people need, but also on this island, um, long-term unemployed and single parent families. And we are the oldest and fastest aging population in the country. So the big question, yes, that's the one. Um, shouldn't a jobs guarantee be a federal program? Well, yes, um, of course, um, but um, this is the problem that we have at the moment and until um, Scott Morrison and um, uh, the LNP are dislodged from government, um, we're going to have to make progress on a jobs guarantee in um, a strategic but incremental way to gather the momentum uh, that it needs in order to become an inevitability like all good um, social and economic post, um, uh, policy. So the end goal for us um, is, of course, a federally funded jobs guarantee that's administered um, at, the local ish, uh, at the local level. And um, I guess as, as Greens, what we understand, um, and this is just from the Tasmanian Greens point of view, is that um, change is always incremental. And, um, and then you can have very sudden um, and sharp change quite quickly. So we need to um, be building the pathways through to a job guarantee with every lever that we can possibly find. And I hope that um, what happened in the Tasmanian Parliament um, provides some inspiration, but also potentially um, a loose template for how we might progress a job guarantee um, at, at a state level, but also critically at the national level. Um, so, we did something a little bit amazing um, a, a few weeks ago in Parliament. In our private members' time, uh, we put forward um, a motion for the Tasmanian Parliament to investigate a jobs guarantee. So, how did it began, begin? Well, it began um, because we are a, um, a wonderful grassroots party. Um, uh, with members who are, are highly motivated for a better, fairer and greener world uh, and a membership that um, always feels welcome to contribute towards policy development, to take us uh, each step for, for forward that we need to um, take. So as a grassroots party, um, we had a motion come to last year's Tasmanian Green State Conference by um, one of my favourite um, young people, Gideon Cordova. Uh, so he's a local council member on the Kingborough Council and he first took uh, this motion to his Franklin branch um, at, and then it went to state conference. So if Steve could just flip up the motion and for those who might have trouble reading it. So the motion was quite straightforward. Um, we resolved that this conference calls upon the Tasmanian Greens to include in the Tasmanian Green New Deal, a job guarantee program in accordance with Article 23 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights to which Australia is a signatory and reads, one, everyone has the right to work, to free choice of employment to just and favourable conditions of work and to protection against unemployment. And um, many uh, of the members of uh, this group will acknowledge that um, up until about 1975, Australia, um, full, full employment was um, a goal um, achieved largely by successive governments of whatever colour. Uh, and then neoliberalism hit. And, um, you know, I would argue, and it's a slight diversion, but we can point to neoliberalism 
for um, some of the most cataclysmic fallout of the, the three crises, um, social and economic inequality, um, the COVID emergency and the climate crisis. So we do need um, a positive um, and effective policy response to um, neoliberalism, which has been prepared to cast um, people with all their potential and um, all of that human desire to work and to contribute. Um, the neoliberal structures that have, um, you know, that are busy gobbling up the earth have cast um, people aside. And um, we have to do better. We have to make sure that the economy works for the planet and for people. And I genuinely believe um, that um, a job guarantee would have overwhelming um, and strong public support, particularly amongst young people um, and amongst people who've been um, uh, um, disenfranchised from uh, the, the, the working economy. So after um, State Conference gave us our um, direction, uh, we went through um, a really broad consultative um, process uh, across the island. We talked to members and supporters, people from um, all walks and all points of the compass um, about the components of a transformative economic vision that we have titled the Green New Deal, of which the job guarantee will be a centrepiece. Uh, we've engaged with people who have um, rich expertise uh, in these areas. And I just wanted to give a shout out to Dr. Stephen Hale for um, providing um, my first real um, proper lesson in what a job guarantee is and, um, and how it can work um, as I really studied up on it um, for us to take the matter to Parliament. We've spoken with um, uh, workers' representatives and community groups and sought feedback, and that feedback is being um, uh, fed into uh, the policy platform that we'll take to the election. But we wanted to get out front on a job guarantee. So we brought a motion to the Tasmanian Parliament, which reads, um, Gabby, do you think that um, it's useful to read this because that type's really small? Um, I put the link in, but yes, why not? It's not no. that long. Can you read it? Or would okay, I'll just... Read... What's that? I can, I can see it fine if you would like me to, or... Do you want to read it? Um, Just a I'm bit of variety. <laughs> now you read it. Well, I can't really see it. <laughs> okay, I'll read. <laughs> I'd be honoured to read it. Thank you. Um, it, it, I can see t the 10 points. So um, it was moved uh, on the 22nd of September. Uh, in the Tasmanian Parliament, and you can see a video of this. Um, I've posted that link in the chat, so if you scroll up a bit, you can actually save the YouTube and watch it uh, in your leisure. It's a really great speech, only 30 minutes. Um, so the motion is, um, we move that the House acknowledges the economic shockwaves from COVID-19 will continue for years. Number two, notes that unemployment and underemployment were already significant ongoing issues prior to the pandemic. Point three, recognises intergenerational inequality has resulted in poor economic health and educational outcomes for thousands of Tasmanians. Four, accepts the majority of unemployed and underemployed people are in unfortunate circumstances through no fault of their own. Five, understands access to a reliable and livable income is essential to meet basic needs like food, housing, healthcare, transport, bills and education. Uh, six, recognises that providing more work opportunities benefits individuals, society and the economy as a whole. Seven, accepts that dealing with the colliding cha challenges of the climate emergency, long-term disadvantages and the impact of coronavirus will require ambitious government action Eight, notes in the decades following the Second World War, the Australian government was committed to a policy of full employment. Nine, further notes that since full the full employment policy was abandoned, the private sector has never employed all willing labour participants, even in economic booms. And 10, calls on the Tasmanian government to investigate how a jobs guarantee program could be adopted in Tasmania to strengthen our COVID recovery and support economic transitions to tackle the climate emergency. Thank you, Gabby. 
so um, that's what we put to Parliament. And just a few words on why it was worded in that way. We wanted this to pass. And um, we wanted to be able to attract the broadest possible support uh, for um, this proposal. And we knew that there was a chance that um, Labor would support it. Now, our, our parliament is very finely balanced. It's bordering on a balance of power parliament bar for one independent. So um, when we were thinking about what the, the punchline would be, what it would call on, um, on uh, the parliament to do or government to do, we wanted it to be um, a, you know, a reasonably tentative step. So we weren't demanding the Tasmanian government fund a jobs guarantee, which we can't anyway, because that would be a money um, a money proposal, but we want um, the Department of Treasury and Finance and Premier and Cabinet um, to do up um, a paper, or basically, on how uh, a job guarantee would work in Tasmania. And interestingly enough, um, we ended up with um, all Labor members supporting um, the jobs guarantee motion, and I had a really interesting exchange across the chamber um, with one of the Labor spokespeople. And I said, do you think that, you know, that Labor will support this at a national level? And he said, well, it's definitely um, on the table for conversation um, and it's definitely something that we're looking at, uh, which I found incredibly positive. Um, we also had um, the vote of our one independent who invariably votes with the Liberal government, uh, but this time she didn't, she voted with us. Um, and then the um, nominally Liberal Speaker, who's also quite independent of mind, um, who had the casting vote, uh, basically said, um, I will always support measures that um, increase employment for Tasmanians and, and give um, that opportunity and that hope, and therefore I'll be casting my vote um, for the positives. So we managed to get a broad coalition of all parties and an independent um, supporting this, which really made me feel really warm in my heart. So um, that was the result. And then, um, well, after that, we um, got some lovely press uh, down in Tasmania. Noel Pearson wrote a really substantive um, uh, talking point piece. Uh, politically, uh, it was the first vote that the Liberals had lost on the floor of the House, and I'm so pleased it was on a jobs guarantee. Um, uh, and we actually had an editorial in the Murdoch Mercury newspaper. Was it the Murdoch? Was it the Mercury, Steve? I think it was the Mercury. Uh, no, so it was in the Advocate. Um, uh, yeah, which is um, also sort of got a reputation for those who aren't aware of Tasmanian um, newspapers. It's got quite a reputation for being quite anti-green, you might say. <laughs> yep. Uh, but even they were sold on the idea of a jobs guarantee. So what's next? Um, we are going to um, uh, uh, calmly, firmly and collaboratively make sure that this work is undertaken. So um, my wonderful colleague in Parliament, Dr Rosalie Woodruff and I have written to the Premier, the Leader of the Opposition, um, Ms Ogilvy and the Speaker. Um, uh, encouraging the Premier, so they were CC, but encouraging the Premier to um, start commissioning the work and saying we're really happy to work um, collaboratively on this. Uh, but we'll also be going out into the community and um, engaging with people on what a jobs guarantee um, would look like, uh, what it can mean for um, a, a more economic justice uh, and tackling social disadvantage and how um, a jobs guarantee can help to um, uh, tackle some of those really chronic um, challenges we have down here. For example, we, we've got a 10,000 um, worker shortage in the caring sectors. So in um, aged and disability care, for example, um, where we are many thousands of um, staff short. Uh, and we also, um, although it's a very beautiful green island, we have um, the consequences here of, um, you know, a couple of centuries of colonial um, degradation of the landscape and um, resource extraction. So we have significant landscape repair work that needs to be done. Uh, and of course, uh, we won't be letting this go. They'll be hearing from us on this 
um, all the way to the next election and beyond in the Tasmanian Parliament. So my final thoughts, um, of course, uh, I mean, we had a, I had a fantastic um, briefing with um, Dr. Bill Mitchell uh, the other day, and he has very strong um, and clear views on what a jobs guarantee would look like. Um, I've heard a number of different um, takes on, on how it might, what the structure of it might be. Um, but I do think that um, we can build on um, the conversation and a momentum and a strong desire across the community for more fairness. And we saw that in the ACT election results and the New Zealand election results where overwhelmingly there was a vote, I think, um, for decency and um, economic justice, fairness and climate action. Uh, so that is about it from me um, on the presentation, but um, I'm really um, happy to, um, you know, chat, listen, um, answer any questions, but I'm definitely not the expert. You've got the expert online in Stephen. Not, not Stephen from my office, but Stephen from Dr Hale, although Stephen from my office is expert in good things too. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. And thanks for putting together the, the visual presentation. That really helped a lot, I think. Can we all um, give um, Cassie a, a virtual round of applause?